Hello and welcome to 3.2 Centripetal Acceleration. So now we're getting into the circular motion part of this chapter. And um, first we're going to describe uniform circular motion. This is motion of an object with constant speed Notice I say constant speed, not constant velocity. Constant speed along a circular path with constant radius. So an object going around a circle at a constant speed with a constant radius, the radius isn't changing, that is uniform circular motion. So the two main things here, well the three things is it's in a circle and it's constant speed, constant radius. So in that sort of motion we have a type of acceleration called centripetal acceleration. This is A C, A sub C, which is the um, instantaneous acceleration toward the center of the circle. So notice I've said I'm going around the circle at constant speed, but my velocity is not constant. Here it's my velocity is upwards, here my velocity is in that direction, here my velocity is in that direction, so my speed is constant, but the direction is constantly changing. For the direction to change, there needs to be acceleration. And if you look at that, if I'm going in this direction, and I want to stay the same speed but move my direction, well, the only way this is going to work is if I am accelerating perpendicular to, the m to my movement. So when I'm over here, if I'm moving like this, I'm accelerating that way. So I am always accelerating towards the center of my circle. And in the next lesson we're going to see, well that obviously has to come from some force. Because to accelerate we need force. But for now we're just focusing on what is this acceleration. So when I'm moving around in a circle, I am constantly accelerating towards the center. And down below here, we have the math of how we can actually solve this problem. We can, we can solve what is that acceleration. And it's a pretty cool derivation. I'll take you through it quickly, but um, I'm not going to dwell on it very long. And it's not super crucial that you understand this, but it's a cool derivation. So we're going to look at it. Here we have a circle. And what I'm saying is that my velocity here, my velocity here, they're in different directions, but they have the same magnitude. So those are the same size. And of course, I can draw this triangle here where I have radius, 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 I have some angle theta in my triangle. So theta is maybe the angle between these two. And you can see that I have some side length. And what we're saying is, on this circle, we're taking this um, shape on the circle and basically trying to draw it again, saying, OK, let's pretend this opposite side is a straight line. Now we have a triangle a triangle with angle theta and a side length of s and we have points a, a prime and these sides have length r. That's the idea here. Now this is maybe a stretch to say let's just pretend it's a straight line but actually it is valid as theta gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So as theta gets close to zero we can actually say that yes, this is basically a straight line and the math works. So that's actually how we're going to use this. Okay, the picture to the right here is just sort of, we've got half of theta, so we're looking at just from the horizontal to this, uh, so we're looking at just this top piece. And what this picture is, is trying to do is we've got our final velocity 
and our initial velocity, and we've got like a little um, special triangle in here that is similar to this triangle over here. And from these triangles, we can work out a fair bit. So here's a few pieces of information here. We can say that V1 and V2, so this V1 and this V2, this V1 and this V2 are related. How are they related? V1 equals V2, which equals just V. We can say in general, has some value of V. Okay, S is the di distance traveled, so this S here is the distance traveled in some elapsed time delta T. So we can say S is equal to V delta T. That's our equation for distance when we have some speed. BAC, so this triangle here, BAC, and AOA prime, this is O, so AOA prime, those two triangles are similar. So those two triangles are similar triangles. We can use this to find delta V. So um, the way we can use that is we can say that delta V over V, V, remember V2 is the same as V. So for similar triangles I can say delta V over V is equal to, well the same thing in the other triangle, so S over R. So this is equal to S over R. Good. And remember S is V delta T, so we can say delta V over V is equal to V delta T over R. And then you can see, well, we have, uh, if I rearrange to solve for delta V, I can say delta V is equal to V squared delta T over R. There's our derivation. So now we have the value of delta V. And then this next step here. We can use delta V to find the average acceleration, which is equal to AC when we make delta T very, very, very small. So when we look at just a very small time window, this will be our centripetal acceleration. So our average acceleration, this is equal to, well, delta V over delta T. I think you all remember that. Delta V is V squared delta T over, over R. And then this is all over delta T. So you can see that the delta T and the delta T cancel out and I get just V squared over R. Therefore, AC is equal to V squared over R. And that is, that is true. That is our centripetal acceleration. So that's the derivation, and I think it's pretty cool. Okay, and so now we have an equation for centripetal acceleration. This tells us how much we're accelerating when I'm, mov when I'm moving around in a circle. Sorry, I'm just going to clean this up. But when I'm moving around in a circle, I am accelerating at V squared over R towards the center. All right, so that's great. Now it says sometimes we don't know an object's speed. So this V, that depends on our angular speed. Or not our angular speed, but our speed sort of along the edge. Sometimes we don't know the object's speed. If we can measure the period T for one cycle, so how long it takes to go around in one cycle, and the radius, we can determine the speed. So I can um, say that the velocity, or the speed here, if I go around one full circle, so 2 pi r, that's the diameter. So if I go around the diameter here, from this point all the way around to the same point, if I go around that far in one period, that's going to be my speed. So 2 pi r divided by the period, that's my speed. And then we can use that to find our, um, our centripetal acceleration. So we can say ac, this is equal to v squared over r. And I can plug some stuff in here. So we have 2 pi r over t squared over r. This gives us 4 pi squared r squared over t squared r. And this all gives us 
4 pi squared r over t squared. So you can see exactly how we got this, uh, this equation. So I'm just going to go ahead, I'll circle the last one we had. This is our first form of the, the acceleration, centripetal acceleration. This is our second form. They're both correct. They're just using different variables. And now we can do our final one. Finally, sometimes we prefer to talk about an object's frequency, f, instead of its period, t. Well, that's a simple enough fix. You should remember from physics last year that f is equal to 1 over t, which means that t is equal to 1 over f. And now I can go ahead and substitute that in. So I get ac is 4 pi squared r over t squared. So that's 4 pi squared r over 1 over f squared, which gives us 4 pi squared r f squared. And there's, oops, there is our, sorry, 4 pi squared r f squared. There is our third equation. So now we have three equations to calculate centripetal acceleration. That's the derivation. On the next page, we're going to summarize those. So it says, so there are three equations for centripetal acceleration. One, a c is equal to v squared over r. Two, a c is equal to 4 pi squared r over t squared. And three, a c is equal to 4 pi squared r f squared. And there we go. There's our three forms of the equation. And now we're just going to do a one problem each. We're going to use those three forms. And you'll just see how they work. So the first one says, a child rides a carousel with a radius of 5.1 meters that rotates with a constant speed of 2.2 meters per second. Calculate the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration of the child. OK. We've got radius. We've got speed. That's all we need. AC is equal to v squared over r. So we get 2.2 squared divided by 5.1, and that gives us 0 0.95 meters per second squared. That's our centripetal acceleration. It's just as simple as that. Once you have the equations, these are very straightforward to do. A solid spinner with a radius of 9.7 centimeters rotates clockwise with a frequency of 12 hertz. At a given instant, the, length, the lettuce in the spinner moves in the westward direction. OK, so we've got a salad spinner. If you don't know what that is, you, you put a bunch of lettuce in here, you spin it around, and it sort of dries it. We're spinning this lettuce around this direction. And we're saying, right now, right at this very, very instant, let's just freeze time. Let's pause. And I've got some clump of lettuce here. Right now, that clump of lettuce is heading in this direction. It's heading westward. OK. Back to the question. We want to determine the magnitude and direction of the centripetal acceleration of the piece of lettuce in the salad spinner at the moment shown in the figure. So our lettuce, what's the centripetal acceleration? The direction part is going to be easy, because the direction is always towards the center. So that means that it's going to be north in this direction. That's our direction. If our lettuce had been over here, then our direction would be east. If the, direction, if the lettuce was over here, the direction would be south. There's no um, equation for that. That's just looking at the picture and using your sense about what direction it has to be moving. So let's use our math here. We know that um, centripetal acceleration is equal to, well, let's see, we have a radius, we have a frequency, a radius and a frequency. So we want to use the form of the equation that has frequency in it. That's number 3. 4 pi squared r f squared. And this gives us, well, I can fill in 4 pi squared. My radius was 9.7 centimeters. Now I need to be careful. I need to use meters. So that's 0 0.097 meters times 
12 hertz squared. And that gives me 550 meters per second squared. And notice I've put on my arrow now onto this because we're going to say what direction it is. It has to be in the north direction. Done. One last problem here. The centripetal acceleration at the end of an e electric fan blade has a magnitude of 1.75 times 10 to the 3 meters per second squared. So I've got some some fan here, something like this. It's got the you know it's got the buttons here, and we've got the you know here's my my fan, something like this. It's spinning around, and we're saying that right at the end of this fan blade the centripetal acceleration is 1.7 times, 7.5 times 10 to the 3, going towards the center, of course. And this is the center here. Okay, there's our centripetal acceleration. The distance between the tip of the flan blade and the center is 12 centimeters. We want the frequency and the period of rotation of the fan. So, let's start with period, just because we haven't used that equation yet. So we can say that AC is equal to 4 pi squared r over t squared. So that means that t is equal to the square root of 4 pi squared r over ac. And I can put in some numbers here. It's the square root of 4 pi squared. My radius was... 12 centimeters, so that's 0 0.12 meters. Divided by AC, that's 1.75 times 10 to the 3. I do the square root of all that, and I get a period of 0 0.052 seconds. There's my answer for the period. Now for frequency, F is equal to 1 over T. So I can say 1 over 0 0.052. And hopefully you left that number in your calculator. You can get a more precise answer that way. I get 19 hertz. There we go. That's how those problems are done. That is the end, and I'll see you in the next lesson.